Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Damp Sam Reacts to uh, somebody who's doing damp work. Well, I'm going where some people fear to tread. Peter Ward's <coughs> video um, on... I, I've, I've, I've just typed in damp and it, this one come up and I know I've not seen this one. This house was diagnosed with rising damp in four rooms. Our client was quoted £3,000 to inject and tank the rooms. I hate that word, tank. It's, it is bone dry. There was a damp problem, which we found and fixed. The damp man has been reported for fraud. So let's react together, yeah? And it's from eight years ago. So uh, I'll just put that in. On with the show. Nana, 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 nana. Come on, Pete. Morning, folks. Well, this is a one of our usual problems. A house that's actually fa failed a survey with damp problems, and we've got a quote for about three or four thousand quid or something in in, in damp proofing in here. So we've got to find. Is it three thousand, or is it four thousand, Peter? You can't say just a bat. I mean, you said in, in title it's three thousand pounds. Is it three or four thousand pounds? It's a big difference. That that's a quarter of budget that you're saying. Is it is it three or is it four? It's a bit sketchy that. Find out why we need damp proofing. So here's what what we're doing. Um, I've got kitchen out here, and then we go from me kitchen into dining room with a chimney you'll notice and there's a very large chimney down there and wooden floor lovely old timber floor and into a front room out there with a bay window now all the way around these walls we've got lots of little prong marks from Wally Dampman telling us that we've got rising damp. There's prong marks in every single piece of wall there. Uh, just to fill you in on the, the numbers, because it's important, this is something, there we go. We've I want to thought that they'd have, that have fluctuated that much in an house. And I, and I get that subfloor probably might do. He's saying that that's 92%. So obviously there's there's a, an issue in subfloor, so it don't look as if it's ventilated and it's probably an earth oversight, and that's high, so ninety two percent. So you know it, we can see that there's an issue there in subfloor, um, and I think he's going to say if 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 I were looking at them readings, I mean I've been I'm puzzled by differences between them, we all doors open and that and ro rooms being such a close proximity, but if you set subfloors. 92% you're going to think there's an issue so there's either no ventilation in there it's probably an, because it's an old house and an earth of a site and there might even be some standing water so we're saying yeah there's there's probably an issue there and if there is a damp course in in property which there may or may not be depending on its age then it's probably bridged so um i've not even been to property and i'm just going to read in so see what he's got to say hiya damn sam here did you know, if you want to watch a full, unedited version of this, if you become a damn fan, two ninety nine, which is as much as a an expensive cup of coffee up here, you can watch a full, unedited version of this. Nah, let's get back watching this bit. Eh? See you in a bit. Seventeen and ten dew point. Subfloor under the dining room. We poked a hole in. Ninety two percent humidity. Uh, 16.3 temperature dew point of 15 so that dew point is interesting because that's a calculated point and it tells us if the building fabric is below 15 degrees we're going to get condensation now we've got loads of mold and mildew in these cupboards they're not very well ventilated as you can see and i've got in front of me now the thermocouple there you go, it's showing 16 degrees, which is about the air temperature in here. And if I come in under the subfloor, 
and shove it into the subfloor. I think you can see there, hang on, let me get it. See, so it's the temperature down here is 13.4. So we've got this lovely Edwardian blue brick damp course that's sopping wet. And it's nothing to do with rising damp. What we've got is active condensation. We've got moisture from under the floor condensing on the brickwork and causing dampness and moisture in the Yeah, so it's basically a bridging problem. So you've got condensation forming probably above blue bricks. Um, and you've got a bridging issue, which I think any average... Any average surveyor, damp, damp surveyor, should have got that. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, just looking at them walls. It was like a quick spin round them, um, and he hadn't pointed any, you know, any salt bands, any any salts are out like that. So I'd have just gone straight away. I'd, I'd have said, you know what I mean? It's not. There's no rising damp. Um, but this is where we want to know more about this surveyor that's that's allegedly been to property. Is it is he a, a qualified surveyor? Is he from a, a, a one you know one of big companies? What were in his report? You know what I mean? It, it, it's it's all right saying that it were a surveyor, you know, Wally Dampman and all this. But what he what he a local bloke, a plasterer who says he's a damp proofer because he's plastered a wall up in damp proofing, in he's rendered it with a bit of additive in. It, you've you've got a broad spectrum of different people who it could have been. Um, and listen, it could have been one of you know some different PCA, but I'd have, I'd have expected the, to be at least put some paperwork on. Let's have a look at his report, blank his name out, um, and let's see what he's got to say rather than saying he's, he's done this, he's done that. Like I said, three grand sound, sounds cheap if you're supposed to be damp proof in four, four rooms, but um, and especially something like that with all furniture in. I'd have got. I'd, I'd have been a lot dearer than that because I wouldn't have wanted to fucking do it. You know, <laughs> with all that furniture, and they're about to shift it. They had to move out for me to do it. With all that stuff, it way. Again, no rising damp. We've got moisture and condensation, and we're just opening up. We've got a hole in here uh, into the chimney, and we've just allowed air to circulate into the chimney for the first time in a long time, and we got. So if. If that's happening in chimney and he's put a, he's put a, a hole in there and he's allowed ventilation to go, it tells me that inside it chimney's become wet. So then sulfate salts will have migrated to the surface. So that's not condensation. It's sulfate salt contamination that's going to be on chimney breast. So that's like a different type of dampness. And for me, them salts need isolating. Um because they're going to be in plaster and they're going to absorb moisture from air. That's if there's an issue on that chimney breast. If there's not, you know, why why did he put that all in there? So there must have been some issues on, on chimney breast. For me, that's, um, that's sulfate salt contamination and it could be some lateral dampness if chimney breast has been blocked up. But we don't know whether it's open. So obviously they must have plastered over it for there to be no hole in chimney rest for no hole in fireplace for air to flow up actually got an air blast going up the chimney now so we will dry this out we will solve this problem we will find out where the subfloor vents are i think the biggest problem in this in this place at the moment is there's no circulation under the floor so as soon as we find that problem solved now following on from the the damp internal floor this is what we find outside now we've got a, a beautiful edwardian blue brick damp course but one of the problems is these are too small and the little holes are blocked up with spiders webs so there's no air circulating and if you look down here we've got high ground level and this is completely covered with concrete with water just going down behind it so it's almost inevitable you're going to get damp problems down the side here one there blocked another one there 
blocked again and then the chimney that we were looking at there's another one blocked again so there'll, there'll have been some air going in but obviously it it needs a greater airflow and they don't look like original if, if it's an edwardian property they don't like original um air bricks they'll, they'll look they look newer they look uh, they look more modern so they've obviously been changed that that would have probably been a double air brick um and obviously ground level has been raised over time so yeah and that's like a that's an issue that we get with a lot of properties a lot of properties nowadays ground levels have been raised a lot over time and if you look at pictures of them when they were first built and you look at where you're going through doer you'll notice that a lot of them there's a, a shorter step because it would have been further down you can see from the salts is a chimney stack and where we could see inside we had a problem that problem is right here and guess what they've done somebody has built up a concrete plinth here and right where we've got the damp problems we've got a drain and another drain so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that there's probably another vent in here somewhere completely blocked up yeah but it'd be nice to have a look upwards I want to see what what's dripping from above because um I get, I mean, one of the things that I had to put in my report is that you need a drain survey. So you need to look as if, if any of them clay pipes, clay drainage pipes has moved for some reason, if if ground's moved, then joint might have opened up. So water could be leaking into ground and that could be a source of moisture that's in ground. So that's one of the things that we, we recommend all the time, that, that they have a drain survey. It's just, it just, it's just in our reports. Um, and it, it's up to the customer whether they do it or not. And this is just a little postscript from that front room, which is above some of the blocked um, air vents. And I've got the thermal imaging camera here. And you can see on the imaging camera that there is a... Let's see if we can get closer. There we go. A little hole above the floorboards and cold damp air from under the floor is getting into the room um at that spot under the floor yeah but that that's majority of houses has got stuff like that because it's weird floorboards go up to the wall a lot of time they didn't want timbers touching masonry so they left a gap so when you take that skirting off there's normally a gap all the way around um, and that's where cold air is coming up, and and that could be even bit place where air brick is. Um, so I mean, we we seal it with with some uh, polyurethane foam. Obviously, <laughs> Peter turning his grill. I don't know how Peter's going to fill it, um, what he's going to use, but um, just some foam, slice it off, put your skirting back on. <clears throat> and there you go. And if you look around here in the corner. This is the and also you've got a you've got a radiator pipe that went down inside of the bay window, and you can see very clearly here there's a triangle um, which yeah. starts where the crosshairs Close are, spot. and then it goes down the wall down there, and you can see the laser pointer on there. It's not very clear, but that triangle is a temperature triangle and if you look down there in the middle you can see again cold damp air coming up from under the floor it's and that is what is supplying the humidity the into this room so we've got that damp cold air getting into the room and then settling on the wall here and that's why we've got that triangle of cold i don't think it's settling on wall i think it's creating a cold spot, Peter. So basically what's happening is you do look at ventilation inside property and it looks like a, a, an old woman in the air and the ventilation in kitchen and, and bathroom is probably not adequate. 
And um, when she turns the lights off and goes to bed on her knee, that's where condensation will form because it's a cold spot. And, and I get that there's, there's probably is some damp air coming up, but also she'll be producing um, moisture and um, humid air with however many people's living there. And she's probably got some dogs and cats and everything, and they'll be adding to humidity. And on a night, that's where cold, uh, that's where condensation will form because it's a dead pocket of air. Cold air in that triangle in the corner there. Uh, it's sorry, not cold air. It's cold building fabric. So up here where the pointer is, you'll see it's fourteen and a half degrees. So the wall's quite warm, it's 14 degrees. Down there in the bottom, where the pointer is now, it's 12. So there's actually a two degree difference in this wall from down in the bottom of the corner and up under the sill. Two degrees, and that's enough for condensation to form. So there we go. Um, we're now presently digging out the, uh, the subfloor uh, trying to get some ventilation down here and that will cure this problem the damp will go away so there you go. and here we have some well triumphant client <laughs> we just dug a, a hole down here this is when, when you lower ground levels this is what i'm on about so you, you know you can lower it and lower it and lower it what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to alter this pipe work now if he's going to leave it at that level He'll have to alter pipe work, so that's going to have to go lower. Um, and this is issue with lowering ground levels. You know what I mean? It's co it cost a fortune in labour. That that'll have been a few days. I think what he's going to say is that's moved, so you've got water coming out of the. Uh... And um, well, I was actually looking for an air vent right where we got the problem internally. There's a huge crack in the pipe. So all the stormwater that's been coming down here over the years. So rather than rather than digging all that concrete up, Pete, why didn't you just have a, a drain survey? And then they'd, they'd have seen that and they could have put a balloon in there and fixed it without having to drag all that concrete up. So, you know what I mean? You want about Wally Damp proofers, but it's common sense to just get a drain survey done first. And they can fix them, they put camera in and they can fix them as they're going along. It is, they'd have seen that crack and that would have stopped that source of moisture, which has been going under the property, probably it's been leaking for years, going under the property, causing a source of moisture inside the house because it's an earth of a site. And, um, and that would have been a a not easiest fix, wouldn't it, than digging all that concrete up that probably didn't need to be dug up. And other thing is and all, has it been cracked because they've dug concrete up? You know, that like, if you've got concrete round all that, that'll take some taking off. That'll take some chipping off. We aren't damaging that pipe. You you need to be archaeologist level. <laughs> Would it? I mean, has it really been cracked? Or have you done it, taking your concrete off? We don't know. We're never going to know. But, again, like I said, if you'd done a, done a drain survey first, you'd have found out. It's just leaking out under the floor in exactly the place where we got a problem. So I think we found the reason why the house is damp. Cool. Oh, well, there you go. And what I'm also looking at here is... Um, Wally Damp Man, and what he's proposed in this house, and this is. A Let's have a look then. Um, so it does look like a it does look like a proper surveyor because he's he's done a decent drawing. Um, verticals. So Wally Damp Man has said to. Has he said tanking? Looks like he's put tanking there. On bay window. That looks like. Rendering so it looks like they've, they've, they've said to put a 
a render we waterproof her in round all the way around there okay, dpc so as i've said to put a dpc in I don't know what that means, 2%. Oh, carbide. So, is that carbide? So, are they saying that they've done a carbide test? I'm sure, that says carbide. Passive air vent. So, wanting a passive air vent there. Go on, let's hear what Pete says about it. There's a plan of what he wants to do. <clears throat> that's not bad for three grand I mean I know it's eight years ago but three grand decent sized rooms hacking all that off and I know it's I know it's wrong uh, I'm, I'm not saying it should, it should have been getting value for money what I'm saying is if that's what all they're charging for that much that's not that's not bad even though it is it didn't need it doing, but but three grand seems cheap. Eight years ago, I was charging more of that thing. Eight years ago, so it makes. Sure, we go, I, we go. I don't think it's one of big companies. Definitely not. Okay. We're going to put an injected dump proof course, and we're going to render both front rooms and the room we're in at the moment, the dining room. Bearing in mind the one bit that he hasn't said that he's going to do anything is right here where we found externally in this area a broken drain and the worst damp problems right in this area here. Now what we're doing at the moment, we're taking carbide samples and we've done one here. Right. Uh, so Peter's taking carbide samples. I thought like, you know what I mean, normally uh, a damp survey you don't take carbide surveys and 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 to be fair carbide is it's a flawed um test on site and you only yeah, listen there's this for me there's no need to do them anyway there's just i think it's kind of proving a point that it's not ground salts but um there won't be any point for me anyway because i don't think it's rising damp anyway um, yeah. I suppose he's got to justify his fees to <laughs> to, to woman because that Peter won't be cheap. I'll tell you that now. And we're doing another one here, and that one went 0.5 percent, and this one is in the pot at the moment. It's not going anywhere. There's the sample. I think you can see it's dry powder. There is absolutely no moisture in these samples. And that is the, the carbide. It's not even getting off the stop. So all these walls that's our first carbide sample in there which went 2% down there went half a percent and down there so when you when you when you're taking a carbide sample they, they tell you not to use <laughs> not to use a mechanical drill um, because it needs to be on a really really low speed um, they used to do it with like a, a, a thing and bit. But um, yeah, you've got to do it on a real low speed because it heats up. Uh, uh, this It's pointless fucking doing them, but it heats up the um, the powder that comes out. So um, if you do it, you've got to do it on a really, really low speed. Really low speed. And whether this has got different uh, speed settings on it i don't know but i have a feeling it'll just be flat out 
Sorry. and then you catch you catch that dust. But because it's hot, it this is this is why on site, um, the well, they're not they're not they're not really good at doing it because uh, you, because you're doing it on site. Um, and I, I don't know why I don't know why the dorm nowadays. I don't know. Maybe if there were an argument, probably if there were an argument um, over whether it were rising damp. And I suppose he's, I suppose Peter's doing it to prove a point that um, Wally misdiagnosed damp man uh, has misdiagnosed it. So it, maybe it's just for video, but it, spending a lot of time on site. So this must be a, an expensive survey. Went zero. And if I just show you here, this is Wally Dampman's damp meter. And you can see, if you look carefully, I think you can see that multiple pinpricks of many surveyors and Wally's all picking up damp. And when you actually look at it and you take a sample, it's bone dry. And if you look behind, that is brand spanking clean lime plaster. There is nothing wrong with any of these walls. They are perfect. And I and I get that. Like I said, a lot of a lot of a lot of damp proofers or damp surveyors that they, they do. They'll put it into um paper and if it's in a corner like that and it's had a cold spot and dead pocketed air in winter that's where condensation will form in like an upside down cone uh, type of pattern. And if you put your a capacitor meter on it, um, you get moisture between them and it'll go off. But what you've got to do is you've got to take readings at different places and, and go up wall. And like I said, it it's not a, it's not a, a done and dusted, type of um survey you've got to use your experience um and i and i get what he's saying but what i'd have done i'd have, I'd have just tested top of skirting um because if if you've got a timber skirting against that wall and timber skirting is wet at top then we know that it's a, that it will be against some that's wet so your wall is most likely to be wet. And then you take readings a bit further up and take some further around the corner. Um, <clears throat> but I do get what he's saying. And, and and it probably, it will be dry, but it might be low level damp. What readings, what they're getting from um, this source of moisture from that pipe that, uh, that got suspiciously broke, um, that they didn't ever a survey done on that could have probably saved them a lot of money in digging concrete up that could have damaged pipe but maybe didn't so yeah you've got it's one of them in it you know what i mean oh, it's misdiagnosed and that is showing salts and nothing more than salts a bit of residue from wallpaper glue Things like that, just in the wall. Bit of a little tiny bit of condensation. This wallpaper isn't even loose. There it's not showing salts. <clears throat> if it is showing salts, if that's um, if that's chimney breast, is it sulfate salts close to chimney breast? It's been shut off for God knows how long. But for me, there's a gap here. It's timber floor. There's a gap here. You've got cold air coming up. It's created a cold spot. Condensation has formed. Been doing it for years. So, um, so it'll be it'll just be wet in that corner of wallpaper. There is nothing going on here at all. There's no damp. And yet this uh, this whole house downstairs, all of this was going to be ripped off. And tanking plaster applied yeah and 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 that's what pisses me off um when i when i get reports sent to me and they've said it's rising damp and everything's got to come off and it is it's a it's a bugbear of mine that and i see people that purport to be you know damp proofers 
reputable firms and the, and I get sent reports with plans and it says hack everything off it's rising down and, it, and they're going across chimney breast as well um, and it does piss me off because it gives Peter fuel for his um, for his campaign and his and his fire um, and listen obviously Peter's he's got um, he's got his own agenda and stuff and Peter has to get paid and, and he's got his his different systems and that, but he, he, he's got a point when, when, when he's on about Wally Damp proofers. Um, and that's my thing when it, when we all get classed into Peter's own Wally Damp proofer umbrella, but, um, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not all Wally Damp proofers. Some of us have got a bit of common sense, Pete. You know what? It's fraud, pure and simple fraud. And this man's going to trading standards. He's going to get done. Um, Send me a private message. I want to know who it was. Do I know him? Um, private message me on Facebook, Peter, and let me know who it was. Because uh, and tell me, tell me a bit more about Job. Because I know you can't put it on here, but um, I'm interested. Look, um, this is just unacceptable. So there we go. And uh, just back to the plan again. Uh, this. Front room here. I'm going to show you the, um, the damp wally. Uh, this is all apparently damp here. Now I'm going to go in the room and I'm going to show you. I've done a carbide sample right in this corner, and this actually is the carbide. You can see. But that, I mean, again, <clears throat> you're not supposed to have. <laughs> If you're doing a carbide test, Peter, and you know you know as well as me, you're not supposed to put put it into a cup like that and and have it all going right out. So you've just told us how wet subfloor is and, and how much moisture it is and how much moisture is in that room, and you're holding cup art. We, um, you know, it, it, you've got to get it in there uh, as quick as you can. We are. Um, Without any uh, atmospheric moisture getting in it, you, I mean, you know that. And I know you're doing it for video and stuff, but, but uh, yeah, this I, I'm not a fan of carbide test point. That one. <coughs> it is bone dry, and it's just it's dusty. It's you just put your fucking finger in it, which is wet. <laughs> Powder. Now, if we. Just come in here and quickly have a look. Where I've done this, we've got again um, lime plaster on the wall, bone dry. And if we get the trusty salt meter, it's reacting a little bit, which is why I've done a sample there. And why is it reacting? Because it's next to a fireplace. If we go around the other walls, that Wally is telling us need to be damp proofed. Bearing in mind this is a salt meter, not a damp meter anyway. Even this is green everywhere. So the diagnosis of damp in these walls is fraudulent that. total fraud this room actually measures in terms of humidity it measures at about 59 percent uh, which although it's only a snapshot in time is extremely low and it's the driest room in the house and that's reflected in these walls they're perfect there's nothing wrong with them so here we have a very typical example of somebody trying to defraud the homeowner um, and tell them that it's a damp room and it needs tanking and injecting when it doesn't there's absolutely nothing wrong with this room at all the phone went off so uh because i've done a, i've done a few videos today and it went off halfway through so you might have some decent angles earlier on and then you just got me uh on here um for, for duration so apologies for that but um yeah so in summary Peter's got a point when he's on about Wally Dampman. <laughs> um, I, 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 
I know I know people are probably getting bored of me saying this, but misdiagnosis is the um is the worst thing for our industry. Uh and it's and it's because there's so many people out there that's been shown by Bill who works at Budget and Scarper, damp proofers, um and Bill were taught by Peter. Peter were taught by Johnny and the past it all down. They've never been and learnt about new systems, new courses. They've stuck to the same sand and cement and every job that they look at has got to be hacked off a metre, 120, drilled and injected and re-rendered with a waterproofer in. But now nah, they're, they're not, they're not re-rendering it. Now nah, they're sticking plastic membrane on wall and then sticking plasterboard on it and then blending it in at top. And a lot's not even doing that right. But they know because there's a plastic membrane there that they know moisture is going to come through. So that that guarantee is going to last for that 10-year um, guarantee period. Now, just because they've hacked it off and put that membrane on and put that plaster on and it's warmed that surface up, it don't mean it don't mean to say that they've um they've treated the type of damp that were in that property. So what I find is every property's got a different type of damp in different areas, whether that's Sulfate salts on chimney breast for whatever reason, not ventilated or whatever. Low level damp from um, subfloor with bridging issues, condensation forming on subfloor walls, cold spots coming through flooring where pipes uh, go through floor, condensation forming on cold walls, thermal cold bridging. There's that many different types of damp that they all have to be looked at and diagnosed differently and put into a report. And this is what I've seen. So that report, what um, what Peter's, Peter's had there, where it's, everything's got to be ripped off, totally wrong. And I get, and I see them all the time. I see them all the time. And, I, and listen, I bring them to, I'll, I don't name names, but I, I do mention them. And, and them that do them, they know that I'm onto them. <laughs> Because I, because if you're round here and I get sent a report by yours, it's up here. I've made that mental note. Um, so be careful. Be careful what you're doing, especially if you're in Yorkshire. All right. So anyway, I, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope I've not been too brutal on Peter. Um, I don't think I have. I think I've been quite fair. And I always am with him. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Me and Peter, not same video. Who'd have thought, eh? That's Damn Sam signing off. Until next time. See you later. Bye-bye now. <laughs>